Whiskey Bowl. I'm you. Rich. It's Daniel. You guys. I don't know why I'm clapping. I just started clapping and it's I not never. For me. I never stopped. <laughs> just, All right. Jason Unsworth gave us another whiskey. Jason Unsworth, you better give us a bastard. Oh. All right, it's Bowmore. Oh, yeah, or Bowmore. No, Bowmore. It's B Bowmore. I love me some Bowmore. You gotta get all five oh, syllables out of there. there. Bowmore. 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 <laughs> this is a 15 year old. Bamore. Ooh. Or eight, sorry, 15. I was looking at the 15. This is the 18 year old Bamore. See, this is what happens when I'm just in my head instead of actually paying attention to my just surroundings. Be here. Be, be with here me, now. Daniel. Be here now, Daniel. Be in this be moment. Be here now. Be in this moment with me. We can share this time together. Oh, uh, see, uh, so here's the thing is when someone is trying to do a gateway into Isla Pete, I often recommend a couple of different whiskeys. Yeah. The first is the Laddie because it's unpeated, but it's still briny. Right. Or the Buna Haben 12, which is slightly briny, but also sherry cask. Right. Or if they really love sherry cask space side, mm -hmm. I always recommend Bomar. Can I say on the nose? Food coloring. What? A lot of food coloring in this one. Fine. It's almost a creamy peat. Mm-hmm. A creamy peat. It is so sweet on the nose, but you don't have to go hunting for that peat at all. No, it's it is absolutely like ripping open. You know what it is? It, oh, that's what it is. It's not burning peat. It, it doesn't smell like burning peat. It's like peat. vegetal it peat. It smells like peat moss. Yeah. You ever dump a bag of peat moss? I said vegetal peat. Yeah. You said peat moss. Yes, I, I was yes. agreeing with you completely. When when you go into, so I've worked multiple times in my life on landscaping crews. Yeah. And it's you get those bags of peat moss, you rip them open in the mm -hmm. middle, and then just shake the ends it's out. It's like the peat still has that, that those, in, I don't know, enzymes, microbes, those, those living bits. Yeah. It's, and it's not just like the burned essence of peat. It's like, no, the, no. the living bits that- This is a garden. That uh, are in there being all weird and gross and germy. I mean, maybe it's smoky, Great. but I'm not getting the smoke as much as I'm just getting- The vegetal peat. earth. Yeah. Oh, so much earth. Wow. Like this rich, is cool. rich soil there. Super. It's so vegetal that if I closed my eyes and ignored some of the more um, prominent earthy, smoky bits, it's like I can smell somebody steaming vegetables from the other side of the house. I mean, it's very sherry cask really? smelling to me. I, the sherry cask? I'm missing that entirely. Sherry really? cask? That's too much, too many things. I mean, I get all of the, like, the, the things that they're actually saying on the back, like the chocolate kind of notes too in the nose. Oh. Oh. So, oh! Whoa! He's whoaing. I've got a a um a pepper note. Pepper. Yeah. Like that there's a slight uh like not hot peppers, but like if you get a like a ah it's not a bell pepper, it's the large Serrano? No, it's not spicy. And it's used a lot in like a not Anchiote? match chili. Anchiote? Uh, ah, my An line's going Anchiote? blank. Anchiote? No, it's a long uh, pepper, green, looks like bell pepper, It's but it's uh, larger and it gets kept flat and charred and put into burrito, really great burritos. That's um, anyway, that I'm getting a pepper, a non-spicy pepper note. Yeah. Starting with the sweet element. Now it's back to just, it's peat. It's what I was getting as I'm getting the peat. At the very, very end. I am, I'm getting, floating on top of all of that earthiness, that peatiness, that smokiness, I'm getting uh, some floral sweetness. This is a, maybe a the thin layer of floral sweetness dancing on top of that. This is maybe the best Belmore I've, I've ever tried. At 43%, yeah, that's you know pretty damn impressive to if get that memory, much that much flavor out of a relatively low proof whiskey. Now you know what's cool in my research of Belmore, which I've uh, I've been doing, um, I stumbled onto something that I didn't realize originally, and I'd read it before, but it brought it back to mind. My dad and I have a fascination for this budget line called McClellan's. Okay. And what McClellan's is doing is bottling single malts that are representing each region. Okay. So you get the McClellan Isla and the McClellan Lowland and the McClellan Highland and right. the McClellan Speyside and so on, right? And they don't always tell you which distillery it is, but they do with 
Iowa. McClellan, Iowa is Beaumont. Okay. And it turns out it's because the same company owns them. Oh. And the McClellan Lowland is the Arkentoshan. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so it, they're, what they are is, my understanding is, they're just three-year-old single malt. Okay. It's the youngest it can be to call it a whiskey. Right. And then they bottle a one region, one distillery, and release it as an example, young examples. So in, and actually the McClellan Isla is great. In Scotland, the it's three years. That's the kind mm-hmm. of mark. Mm-hmm. Okay, Scottish whiskey, three years, and then it's considered a single malt if you have all the other factors. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. We got Rob Likes Bourbon. The hat of generosity needs to make a comeback for donation days. <laughs> I agree. I liked the hat of I generous like the hat giving. Of generosity. The thing is, there's so many things that get shuffled in here and moved around. There, yeah, I kept the hat of generous giving in here somewhere. Well, it's like a two hundred dollar windscreen. For I know me. it's it's not cheap. No, it's probably in my studio. I okay. like the hat. It was Maybe a good you took hat. it back. It's a quality hat. Top, okay, top shelf. I agree. Hat. Maybe uh, this Friday. I get. We well, gotta look in the studio to make sure we have it. But if you do, gotta wear it the whole time. Wait, this Friday? You have to wear it the whole time. No. <laughs> Cast code. Because <laughs> I know what's happening this Friday. So. Wait, what's happening this Friday? So, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Gonna... I don't know, yeah. If the SWA brought in the same barrel size labeling restriction in Scotland, then the Lafroyd Quarter Cask could not be labeled as single malt whiskey. Yes, that Pretty was crazy. Wouldn't that, right? So, this idea of like barrels only count if they're 50 guests. So, what he's talking about is there's a current uh, resolution in TTB, a suggested change to the code that would change the word whiskey to only to apply to things aged in barrels of roughly 50 gallons and up, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. But that would wipe out an entire round of craft distilleries. Mm-hmm. And it would keep even people in Scotland like Lafroig doing a quarter cast from calling it whiskey all of a sudden. I wonder how that would affect import laws. I could not care less. Like it's an aggressive level of not caring. Well, actually, it wouldn't affect the import laws because the law in TTP actually states that Scottish whiskey is just whatever Scotland says Scottish whiskey is. It's like I cared. Here's what it is. It's like I cared so little that it came full circle, and this is now the single most important thing in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it went past the end, past Whoa. the spectrum, and we started back. That is a long ways. Okay, we got Sma S Man seventy two ninety. Instead of marshmallows, try toasting peeps over the campfire. Huh. Yes, I'm talking about shoving a stick of the bird's ass and holding it into flame. <laughs> Don't, <laughs> don't knock it till you try it. I've never tried roasted peeps. I put them in a microwave until they exploded. <laughs> just to see, because remember that? That was always fun. We all know you're the immature one. So today, I was doing uh, research and stuff, and I stumbled onto Facebook. I was looking for other things, like the comments you're reading. And I stumbled onto a post a friend of mine put in. <laughs> and it's John Green. He's a local drummer mm-hmm. and just all-around cool dude. And and he had this post, and I've been, I laughed for 15 minutes, mm-hmm. just sitting by just myself what was the, in my what office. Was the post? Share the love. What was the post? And that, just because maybe it caught me off guard, but this is a question that somebody put on a science page in a Facebook group. Mm-hmm. I have a science question. If kinetic energy is converted into thermal energy, right? right? right. So kinetic energy converts into thermal energy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How hard do I have to slap a chicken to cook it? <laughs> I mean, and then somebody replied with a science question. Is there an answer? Yeah. It says, but it's just the word slap a chicken. <laughs> the phonetics it. of slap a chicken. To cook it. Yeah. To cook it. The phonetics. How hard do I have to slap a chicken? <laughs> As your friendly neighborhood physics major, I decided to calculate this with a few assumptions. Right. The formula for converting between kinetic energy and thermal energy is 1 over 2 mv squared 2 equal mct. The average human hand weighs about 0.4 kilograms. The average slap has a velocity of 25 miles per hour. <laughs> well, that's actually pretty fast. An average rotisserie chicken weighs two pounds, has a specific heat capacity of 2720J over KG and C. And let's assume that the chicken has to reach a temperature of 400 Fahrenheit, so they're baking a chicken. Sure. Um, And the chicken will start frozen, so zero Celsius. Oh, yeah. Right? 
One average slap would generate a temperature increase of 0 0.0089 degrees Celsius, which means it would take 23,034 average slaps to cook a chicken. <laughs> to cook a chicken in one slap, you would have to slap it with a velocity of 3,725 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> vaporize the chickens. Just cook a chicken. Vaporize the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be a cooked chicken. It would be a cooked chicken. Uh, it's Until it for turned, the last two hours, it turned to about every ten minutes, the phrase slap a chicken pops into my head and mm. I start giggling. <laughs> I can't help it. So one more round through here to give some notes, because this has evolved a little bit. It's changed a little over time for me. Yeah. Well, I've gotten more of actual smoke in the nose yeah. than just the medium. Well, I'm starting to get some more smoke. I'm also starting to get some more honey on the nose. I'm getting more of the, the sh what I think is the sherry cask influence. I'm getting more of the dark fruit notes. So more of the, um, and each more of the smoke comes through in the empty glass nose. Oh, yeah. So each one of those notes, at 43%, here's the thing. I think if this was cast strength, then these notes would have been like, wham, right in your face. Right. But... At this low of a proof, it was just, just enough to where I didn't feel like it was thin. Right. I didn't feel like I have to go hunting. It's like, oh yeah, I can pick out that, 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 and that. But if that was turned up, I think it would have been, you know. Intense. Intense. Um, not necessarily a bad thing. But at this 43%, it's still oh. enough, still enough there to be interesting. Try this with a dash of water. Yeah. It pushes the oils to the top. Your next sip gets a little more aggressive. Just a little bing, a little bing. Yeah, I think they proofed this to just the spot on perfect amount for me. For, I, I, I think, would love to compare, but I think right here it's respectable. I think that the cask would probably taste amazing, right? But it would be more of a struggle. I think this is just a nice. I want to keep pouring more and more and just enjoying because it. Because was this the one that you said this is a good gateway into Pete? Yeah. Okay, so that proof, if you're looking at it as a gateway. Hey, Pete with Sherry Cask. Pete with Sherry Cask. All right. I dig. Here's to fighting, stealing, drinking. Oh, crap. Hang on. You if can't you toast fight, it. May you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you slap a chicken, <laughs> may you slap <laughs> a slap chicken with us. <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.